Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to the team at HA Fox Jaguar Guildford, I'm bringing you an exterior and interior tour of the new entry-level 2017 2.0-litre four-cylinder Jaguar F-Type. This new entry-level F-Type has caused controversy amongst sports car purists, but it is a real-world step towards the eventual hybrid and all-electric models that will come in a few years' time. For some, this will indeed be a travesty, but it is simply a response to environmental concerns and the resulting pressure being applied to car manufacturers. The powertrain found here actually comes from Jaguar's XC and XF models, but has received a power boost. Even with this boost, the new engine is still the most efficient in the F-Type line, and with a weight saving of 52 kilograms, the car has a curb weight of 1,525 kilograms in the coupe and 1,545 kilograms in the roadster. Over the V6, it comes with a combined MPG of 39.2. Despite the weight decrease, the car shares the same 2,622 mm wheelbase with the other cars in the range. There are two main specification options to choose from, the standard or this R-Dynamic which comes with larger wheels, adaptive headlights and a switchable active sports exhaust. In addition to the new R-Dynamic model line, the exterior and interior have also received a facelift. I'll highlight all revised aspects throughout the video. The large bonnet lifts up easily from the front and is supported by two struts. As seen here, the engine sits right over the front axle, which has been said to result in good balance. It's powered by a 2.0-litre, four-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine that, after some fettling, now produces 296 brake horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. These figures provide a 0 to 62 mile per hour or 100 km per hour time of 5.7 seconds and a limited top speed of 155 miles per hour. At the rear, the dual exit exhaust of the V6 has been changed out for this single central exit. As this is the R dynamic, its internal valve can be opened or closed. Let's see how it sounds first closed, then open. <laughs> The R-Dynamic gets 19-inch wheels as standard, but this car is sitting on the optional 20-inch front and rear, six split-spoke diamond-cut alloys. There is no carbon ceramic brake option for this car. Here, the car is sitting on the standard 355mm disc, but there is also a 380mm disc option, which comes with red calipers. Now we've finished the model overview, we can start the exterior tour from front to back. There is a new front bumper that replaces the side-divided front air intakes with simple open vents. In my opinion, this creates a softer aesthetic, as this car is fitted with a design pack, we find an extended gloss black front splitter with two small air inlets. The large gaping grille above remains and now feeds cool air into a turbocharger rather than a supercharger. It now sports our dynamic insignia on the left with the Jaguar Crest Central. The adaptive LED headlights have seen quite significant reworking of the original set found in the F-Type. The spherical xenon bulb has now been replaced by more angular bulb. These are outlined by the aggressive signature daytime running lights. Above, the long bonnet retains its aggressive ridges and sloping design, as well as the gloss black hot air outlets centrally. The vents just behind the front wheels remain and feature the same duct that flows into the wheel arches. This could exist to channel both air and water. Above are the electrically adjustable folding wing mirrors with integrated indicators. They can also be specced with an auto dimming function. The gloss black side skirts below are also part of the exterior design pack. Above are the integrated door handles. I will demonstrate their functioning a bit later in the video. There are three roof options, painted as standard, fixed panoramic or carbon fiber. This model has been specced with the fixed panoramic. Behind is the dorsal antenna with a slim horizontal brake light. Sloping down is the rather large rear window that actually doesn't come with a wiper so regular cleaning would be a must. Rolling over the side of the car and just behind the tinted rear windows are the sultry rear arches, and on the right side, the fuel filler cap for the 63 litre fuel tank. The curvaceous brake, reverse and indicator light complex slopes down on either side and sits with a partially closed eye centrally. This adds to the car's dynamic and sporty aesthetic. Below the registration plate is a small reversing camera, part of the parking pack with more R dynamic insignia to the right. Below is the gloss black extended diffuser which is also part of the exterior design pack. The bottom section that runs up and over the exhaust would be removed without this pack. Now we've finished the exterior portion of this video, let's move inside. The key is standard Jaguar and comes with more controls than most other keys. Buttons to lock, unlock, for the lights, to open the boot and hazard lights. Once unlocked the handle pops out and can then be used to open the door. It also pops back in once the car is locked. The handle is easy to locate but requires a little force to open the door. The interior here is a blend of leather, alcantara and aluminium and feels spacious, well equipped and a lot more modern than the previous version.
I'll begin the interior in-depth tour with the doors. At the top, they begin with a smooth leather section with a tweeter further forward. The central section is fitted with Alcantara and features the door release, internal lock and unlock controls and seat controls, here missing the memory pack. The leather armrest below runs from the back with electric window and mirror controls and the main Meridian Entertainment door speaker, part of the 10 speaker standard system. This can be upgraded to the 12 speaker surround sound system. At the bottom, there's a slim storage area and the lowest speaker. Now moving into the car, I found the sill area to be neither low nor wide, so ingress and egress wasn't problematic. And this is to be expected with a GT such as this. The sill plate here is the standard option. A fully illuminated Jaguar sill plate can be spec'd. Moving up, we find controls for exterior lights, cruise control, and to open the boot, as well as the first manually adjustable air vent. Sitting centrally is the standard wheel option. A flat-bottomed variant can be alternatively selected. The leather upholstered multifunctional wheel has trip and call buttons on the left and controls with the cruise control on the right. The leather feels smooth. Other than the rear section obscuring the grip at 9 and 3, the circumference feels good. By depressing the brake and push to start button, which is found on the right of the central column, the ignition and dial start sequence is initiated and the top mounted air vents raise. The dials ahead are divided, left to right, speedo, a central digital trip screen and revs on the right. Options in the trip itself are as follows, display for units and language, vehicle settings for general configuration information, vehicle info shows information regarding tyre pressure and condition and service schedule. Driver Assistant shows two safety systems here, AEB, or Autonomous Emergency Braking and Lane Departure Warning. These can be toggled on or off. Next is the general trip for stored data and to alter units between metric and imperial. As mentioned earlier, these menus are toggled through using the buttons on the left of the wheel. The dash in front now features Alcantara lining on the instrument cluster in addition to two long air vents. A leather strip runs down from the middle of the dash and gradually increases in size, becoming the passenger side handle. Designed in this way, it also functions to divide up the driver and passenger sections of the cabin. Centrally, the 8-inch display has a newly updated in-control infotainment system for this new model year. There are four main options on the home screen, media, climate, phone and navigation, although there are additional screens to the right and left. There are also direct select buttons from left to right, home, settings, parking sensors, reversing camera, climate, multimedia phone connectivity and navigation. The first touchscreen option is for media connectivity, where Bluetooth, USB or AUX connections can be used. The central console has three inlay options, two aluminium and one carbon, with the one selected here being the standard, known as Delta Aluminium. Settings for climate control are next to it. The menu for call and talk connectivity is below, and finally, navigation. With this new system, navigation controls are more responsive, precise and customizable. The map can be pinched and zoomed out as well as moved around. With a simple depress, a destination can be easily selected and navigated to. Overall, I have to say the system feels very responsive and fast. The cameras were inaccessible here as the engine wasn't on and the in-control app screen directed us to setup, but essentially, they are mobile phone apps that enable the driver to see in-depth information about the car's status and location from their phone. Live provides real-time updates and information for the car's software. Next is Valet Mode, which allows other users to drive the car, but with a password-protected touchscreen, glove compartment and rear boot. Now moving away from the screen, we find dual zone ventilation and climate controls below. Depressing the central scroll wheel turns the system on or off, and with it, moves the air vents up or down. There are further controls for this below, with the centrally located button for the hazard lights. Below this button array, the 12 volt socket or cigarette lighter is located on the left, 
and the engine start-stop button on the right. Behind is the main control array and drive selector. The same 8-speed ZF Automatic is found here that's in the other F-Type models. This is currently the only transmission option for this new powertrain. The other controls here are for, from right to left, the on-off and volume control for the sound system, the drive mode selector for normal, dynamic and configurable driving modes that alter the throttle, suspension and general driving dynamic. Behind is the button for the traction control. To its right, the control for the switchable exhaust valve, with the parking brake to its right and controls for the rear wing, the stop-start function and finally a small storage area to the far left. Returning to the button for the wing, it can be used to raise or lower the rear wing, as seen here. It is pushed up with two struts. Let me know in the comments below if you think the wing raised improves the car's aesthetic or if you think it looks out of place. Behind this main button array is a small concealed storage area for two cup holders. Simply depress the button on top and the lid slides backwards. Moving back, there's a leather upholstered lid that can double up as a central armrest. A small catch needs to be lifted inside to release the lid. It can then be lifted up to reveal quite a small yet deep storage space. USB, auxiliary and a 12 volt socket can also be found here. Moving up, there's a small netted storage space that on the other models was actually an open plastic storage compartment. Despite the low, sloping rear window, rear visibility is actually quite good. Behind the seats there are also structural pillars. The seats in the newer F-Type models have also been revised. They are significantly slimmer and provide an instantly more modern and well-designed interior aesthetic. Here, the optional performance seats have been specced in half leather and half Alcantara. There are small leather hoops that help to guide the seat belts that can also be specced in red. Moving the seats forward, there is a little more storage space with a coat hook at the top. We can now look at the car's remaining storage facilities and capacity. The lockable and illuminated glove compartment is open with a light depress of the button on top. Quite a bit more can be stored here other than the car's service and user guides that are currently occupying it. Now moving outside, the boot can be opened inside using the button to the right of the steering wheel or the button on the key. It opens easily and comes with a small handle on top to help lower it. There is also a power close function, but this wasn't specified here. Boot capacity with the parcel tray stands at 310 litres and without it, 408 litres, which is quite significant for a GT. The boot extends quite significantly into the arches. Without the small storage aid, we find small straps at the far side to secure items. Moving back inside briefly, we can take a look at the panoramic sunroof sunshield. Ahead of this is the SOS control, reading lights and auto dimming rear view mirror. So that concludes my in-depth tour of the new 2017 2-litre four-cylinder Jaguar F-Type. Thanks again to HA Fox Jaguar Guildford for the filming opportunity. All their contact details can be found in the description below. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, thanks for watching.